I want to talk about another way of plotting points in space called cylindrical coordinates. We're used to a rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system where I give you an x, y, and a z and you go out some distance on the x-axis, over on the y, and up on the z. I want to imagine that instead the xy plane is a polar plane and we can identify points in the xy plane, that polar plane, the same way we usually do with some distance away from the origin r and then we rotate through an angle theta. And that would identify a point in the xy plane. If I add to that a z, that is truly just a z coordinate, I would have what we call a cylindrical coordinate. So that would be the point r theta z. We call these cylindrical coordinates because establishing a radius r would be a circle in the xy plane, but since I have heights, those would be right circular cylinders. So I can actually think about this as identifying a cylinder in space that I'm on, rotating to a particular angle in that cylinder, defining a vertical line I'm on, and then finding the exact spot I am on that cylinder. So let's plot a point in cylindrical coordinates. And then we'll write down a few relationships between rectangular and cylindrical coordinates. Let's plot the point two, comma pi halves, comma three. So I would need to think about going two units out on the x-axis, rotating an angle of pi halves, and then from that, oop, out two units there, and then up three, one, two, three. And in perspective, I'd be looking at that point right there. Having rotated an angle of pi halves, I'm in the yz plane. So this is the point two pi halves comma three. Oh, pause the video here and make up a few points and plot them in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, well, it's a healthy thing to be able to convert between rectangular and cylindrical coordinates. So here are the relationships between the two. The good news about these relationships is they're really just the relationships between rectangular and polar coordinates with, for right now, one additional piece of information. So x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, y divided by x is tangent theta, and then r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And finally, the one piece of new information was z, is equal to z. Not very interesting. Now one thing I should point out is that when we're dealing with rectangular coordinates, we usually let r be a directed distance. It can be sine, telling us that if it's negative to reflect through the pole. And while we get a consistent coordinate system if we do that in cylindrical coordinates, um, we adopt the convention that r is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, just to make things a little easier and so that we're identifying points in the same way. So that when you and I list a point, we're listing it in the same way with the same R. Well, these are our relationships. So let's take that point we plotted, 2 comma pi halves comma 3, and write it in rectangular coordinates. Excuse me, that was pi halves a minute ago. Well, I'll do the hard part. Z is equal to Z. The Z coordinate is 3. I'm really just converting a rectangular point in the plane to a polar point in the plane now. So X is 2 cosine of pi halves. Well, the cosine of pi halves is 0, so the X coordinate is 0. Y equals 2 sine of pi halves, which is 2 which is nice because that, that's the point we plotted. We're at two on the y-axis and three on the z-axis, and because we had rotated the angle of pi halves, we were at 
x equal zero. Well, let's just plot one more point in a cylindrical world. And the example I want to do here was the point four comma five pi six comma two. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm going to, but I tend to approach them all the same way just to be as simple as possible. I know whatever point I'm getting ready to plot lies on a circle of radius four on, excuse me, in the xy plane, it's, if I just look at the polar coordinate, lies on a circle of radius four. It's either above, on, or below it once I add in the z coordinate. So now I need to imagine rotating, rotating an angle of five pi six. So I like to think about starting here and I rotate to five pi six. Well, there's pi halves, five pi six would be one pi six away from that angle. So that nice little 30 degree angle there. And now I need to rise up two units. And so what I'm gonna do is draw something that's parallel to this ray, because it's right above that ray. And then parallel to the z-axis, there's my point, four, five pi, six comma two. Not in the first octant, right, right behind it there, and that's our point.